Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are very happy to welcome Dr. Susan Merman, a highly regarded obstetrician gynecologist based in Tennessee. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So over 20 years ago now, uh, you co-founded McDonald Merman uh, Center for Wellness and Health, an all-female women's clinic. Will you share your experiences with that, setting up that, that clinic? Throughout my career, I've always noticed that there's a better way to treat patients and especially women when it came to women's health care. It wasn't all about delivering babies and about pap smears, but there was more to their health. I wanted to treat more of the whole patient, and fortunately my partner Mary McDonald believed the same way. So we started our clinic 20 years ago. Actually, it's been 22 years ago. However, in the last couple years, we've sort of reinvented ourselves now to more of a wellness and health clinic. So we're treating um, everything from A to Z with the patients, you know, thyroid disorders, weight disorders, uh, encouraging them to live better lives, healthier lives. We have an aesthetic clinic that also takes care of their outside sure. needs that uh, actually feeds into what we're doing. It makes women feel better about themselves because they like what they see in the mirror. And I'm pursuing the fellowship uh, so I can better treat the patients and get them to a preventative stage as opposed to just putting a, a Band-Aid on it like most physicians will do. The right. Band-Aid medicine is, is not our gig anymore. It's right. trying to stop it so we don't have to put a Band-Aid on it. There are other ways of doing things besides what the hospitals are telling you or the insurance companies are telling you to treat patients, that we need to be on a more proactive preventative mode. It doesn't necessarily mean throwing every drug at the book on a patient to get them to feel better. And polypharmacy is just so rampant these days. So I'd rather counsel my patients on how to live healthier lifestyles, mm -hmm. how to eat, when to exercise. And A4M has sort of given us the tools to do that. Mm -hmm. You are regarded as an innovator, a trailblazer, uh, in innovative care for women, leading the charge on various new technological trends in minimally invasive surgical options and robotic surgery. What do you consider to be some of the most significant new developments in advanced female care? Well, it's interesting you say that because I was one of the early adopters of minimally invasive surgery. It was better for the patient, had better outcomes, quicker recovery time, they got back to their selves sooner than they would be in the hospital uh, you know, for three or four days. So I adopt that early on, but really what's happening now is I would like to get to the stage where I don't have to operate on the patient. I would rather treat them and address their issues and work with them so I'm not taking out fibroids, which are tumors in the uterus the mm -hmm. size of you know a 20-week pregnancy, or not treating endometriosis and doing hysterectomies for endometriosis, but look at the underlying cause of what's going on with endometriosis, polycystic ovarian disease, fibroids. Uh, there are environmental, there are genetic issues, and dietary issues. So just looking at that and trying not to get them to the stage where I have to operate on them is actually what my goal is. Right. Too often, female sexual health is misunderstood, overlooked, or simplified as being uh, synonymous with reproductive health, but your practice takes a very different approach. Can you explain what integrative gynecology is and how it is practically implemented in your practice? Well, um, we, we start the conversation with the patients. So I'm not just, like I said, doing a pap smear, doing a pelvic exam, and sending them on their way. But in the conversations, you're asking the right questions. Are they sexually active? How is their health? How's their relationships? And you're asking all these questions and then pinpointing where to actually treat the patient, or not treat the patient, but help them live a better quality of life. So we're looking at all aspects of their health, even their psychological health, which mm -hmm. plays in, sure. I can't say it even more, it plays into their ultimate health, especially for women with pelvic pain. There's other outlying issues that are doing, and stress is a big deal. So we're looking at all these aspects of women and their problems and trying to address each one and not just, like I said, do your pap smear, do your pelvic exam, maybe give them a drug and then that's it. So we're incorporating everything into their, even uh, 
women's sexual health. We have so many more options out there, and now women are more open to talking about it, which is pretty exciting because it didn't used to be like that. Yeah. Just like no one ever talked about menopause. Now they're all talking about menopause. They're all talking about hormones, but they're talking about sex, and that is a good quality of life. Do they understand that, that sexual health is kind of a reflection of overall health? Well, they do after I get done talking yeah. to them. <laughs> Good for you. Do you uh, employ things like the, the O-Shot in your practice? or We do have the O-Shot. Uh, we also have radio frequency treatment of um, the vaginal area, which has mm -hmm. been a game changer. I'm telling you, a game changer mm -hmm. for women's sexual health. And I did a lecture once on, um, and I tried to get it in A4M, but it was sex is anti-aging. And if you look at various studies when it comes to a lot of women, and there was one interesting one looking at actually telomeres and women have, having more sex, that women having more sex or having sex at least once a week had longer telomeres than women that didn't. So that shows you that there's a lot to say about sex and intimacy and relationships and quality of life. And so we try to tie that all in together. So it's pretty fascinating. Um, and it is anti-aging. You know? I, mean, I know most men would probably agree. But a lot of women, you know, they're they're st they're thinking, oh, it's I'm 50 or I'm 60 and it's all over. Right. I have patients 70 and 80 plus that are still sexually active and enjoying a great relationship with their partners. Mm -hmm. And those procedures that we were talking about before, the O shot and uh, the other one, um, it's radio frequency treatment yeah, radio of the frequency. vaginal, yeah. Right, and, and doesn't that also help to improve incontinence issues? It really does. Um, that was kind of an aside. I think the whole uh, radio frequency treatment was initially developed for women that had vaginal laxity and uh, they weren't enjoying sex anymore. Uh, but when they started studying it, and we did some of the studies early on, we showed that there was like, oh my God, I'm not leaking as much as I used to, or I don't have to go to the bathroom every five minutes like I thought. So that was a good side effect, and vaginal dryness was improved. That was a side effect. And so it really has been a win-win. And then when you're looking at the aesthetic side, women are just thrilled. Yeah, yeah. So, and that helps. Right, absolutely. Um, how can medical professionals work to normalize and better address a more holistic approach to and understanding of female sexual health? Never stop learning. I will never stop learning. And I've learned through, so much through A4M and other, I read all the time. I'm doing the fellowship. I look forward to coming home and reading all the articles that they give me because I am learning so much more. I'm doing a peptide certification, which uh, is just kind of blowing my mind right now and, and really kind of feeds into what I'm doing for the patients. Mm -hmm. And my goal is get them off all those medications. Uh, you know, I treat a lot of heart disease, believe it or not. I mean, not, you know, patients that are really in trouble, but yeah. I was the president of the American Heart Association in my local area 20 years ago because I was addressing women's issues in heart health. So I was doing this before I even got involved with A4M and, yeah. and the fellowship. And so this is all just blowing my mind about all these things that I can do and all these tricks I have up my sleeve now to help them uh, instead of just throwing a statin or a blood pressure medication at them. So I was doing that a long time ago, but now I'm just much better at it. <laughs> have you checked out Dr. Houston's integrative cardiology? Oh my God, I finished his model and you just, you just kind of like want to marry him because like, he's so smart. <laughs> But I have his books, and I could listen to his lectures uh, all day long, and I'll never look at olive oil the same. <laughs> he drinks like six tablespoons of olive oil a day, and I'm like, yeah, I could live like that. Yeah. So I, I can tell you're, you're passionate about this. Um, can you imagine you know, practicing any other way? No, I couldn't imagine practicing where I had to go to work every day, and I just did the standard of care to every single patient. Um, I made a decision two years ago that I was not going to live my life in the current practice that I was living. Uh, we weren't doing anything new and exciting. I tried to implement a lot of things. So Dr. McDonald and I sort of did a little rearranging of our practice mm -hmm. and decided that we were going to run the practice the way we wanted to. It's more wellness-based and health-based for women and adding services that enhance their lives as opposed to running out the door and delivering a baby. Right, right. 
So is your practice more of a concierge? Uh, do you accept insurance? We accept insurance, mm -hmm. and but we have a lot of, um, I can't say they're concierge, but we have a lot of cash-only services mm -hmm. that basically insurance wouldn't cover right. anyway. So we do sell what we think is a great line of medical-grade supplements in the office, um, and we know how to supply them. We know what patients need. We have testing that we're doing on the patients, testing their micronutrients, testing their hormones, testing their cortisol, and looking at the patient and seeing what their needs are and, and helping them with that. Right. You have been vocal on your philosophy between the relationship of aesthetics and overall health. Would, will you share on how you grew to become passionate about this often ignored link? Well, it's funny. I, you know, first of all, I am my own biggest experiment. <laughs> so, uh, probably 17 years ago, um, you know, I re I was always reading about aesthetics, always looking at the magazines, always looking at this in addition to just medical uh, journals, and I saw that Botox had come on the market, and I thought, this is this sounds really good. I think I want to try this. So the first plastic surgeon I talked to just said, Oh no, I'm not putting that poison in your head, and so. I went to her partner <laughs> and I asked him, I said, would you just give me some Botox? He goes, sure, show up at noon and uh, you'll be my first patient, but we'll try it. So that day I went up at noon, he put Botox in my forehead and it was the greatest day of my life because I was driving home going west and I couldn't squint to close my eyes <laughs> because of the sun. But I was the happiest camper afterwards because I didn't, ha I had a re more relaxed look on my face. I had, uh, I didn't look like I was mad at somebody anymore. And it really changed me personally. Just by seeing what I saw in the mirror made me feel better about myself. And I thought, wow, I think this is good for my patients. So a couple of years later, we started with, an, with one nurse, she's now my partner in the business, and we started with her and we started with Botox and some fillers and we grew our business from there. And now we have Basically, it's part of our integrated gynecology. It's our business is right next door. We've got a door from our waiting area that goes straight into the clinic. And women, we share patients back and forth, and they're taking better care of themselves. They're exercising. Um, they're going out. They have more self-confidence. And it's more than just physically what they see, but there really is a connection in their brain that can turn off depression sometimes by just doing simple little things. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you love your practice and this approach to uh, medicine. What advice could you give to a practitioner who is thinking about making the leap, as it were, and, and changing from their more traditional practice into an integrative functional medicine practice? What kind of advice could you give them? Well, I think, you know, this has been a 20 plus year in the making practice for me. It's just that Sure, set some goals, but don't do everything at once. Mm -hmm. Learn and educate yourselves. Join A4M, which is a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, and add little things at a time. If you try to do too much at once, it doesn't come off as sincere, and you're in over your head. Right. So start small and add little things. And I think when I reinvented the practice two years ago, in my head, I had a whole game plan of what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think within the first few months, I got a little upset with myself because things weren't going. Then I just woke up one morning, two o'clock in the morning and said, you know, I have to start one thing at a time. And then from there on, it went on and it took me six, eight months and I've got everything in place and now we're adding new, new services. Right. So I think starting slow and, and doing things one at a time and educating yourself yeah. on each individual thing is very important. Yeah. You just can't set out a goal of like, I'm gonna have this type of practice and what's gonna offer, but you've gotta really study it and, and just take your time. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. your time. I appreciate it.